I met Lane when he played the Tacoma Little Theater in Tacoma. So I met him first, but I actually played with Mike Starr first in a, <laughs> in a really crappy band called Gypsy Rose in Burien. Uh, my mother had my mother had just passed away, and I didn't really have any place to stay, and I kind of was done with Tacoma anyway. So I met this guy, Tim Branham, and and uh, he he invited me to come up and hang with him, and I stayed in his basement for about a week. And Mike Starr came over, and we were jamming, and then we both got kicked out after a week. So then I didn't see Mike again until I uh, met Lane again at, at a house party, kind of recently or pretty much right after that. And he kind of he kind of had heard about my situation and I didn't really have a place to live or anything. And and uh, so he invited me to, up to uh, Ballard where he lived at this place called the Music Bank, which was yeah. fucking awesome. I mean, for a bunch of young kids, it was a 24-hour rehearsal hall, 50 rooms, and just something going on all the time. I met Lane, we exchanged information. I mean, there was no way to get a hold of each other, but somehow he remembered me and... He had a piece of paper with your number yeah, on it. Yeah, and then when Jay, or yeah, somebody's number, I didn't have a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Probably but, Melinda's or something. Yeah, yeah, my girlfriend's or something who was Mike Starr's sister. And, uh, and Jerry, I guess, was looking to put a band together, and Lane said, oh, this drummer dude seems cool, call him. Mm -hmm. So Jerry called my girlfriend at the time, and and uh, me and her went down. That's right, it was Melinda. Yeah, it, it was, was Melinda, and, we, and, and you yeah. called her, and then we went down to the music bank, and I listened to some of your demos and stuff. You had like a headband, a, a, one of those <laughs> kind of like a thing like a... Uh, it's like a gold like lame. Ian, Yeah, like Ian Asbury <laughs> wore or something. Um, and I came down and we listened to a couple tunes, and I thought it was pretty cool, and, and uh, we kind of feeling each other out and as I was sitting there he said something like, oh, you know, we need a bass player to jam with. I jam with this guy Mike Starr a year or so ago. He seemed like kind of a cool dude and I was like, that's weird because this is his sister and, and I've been in bands with Mike on and off since we were 11 or 12 yeah. or something. Yeah. He's like, wow, that's weird. So I called Mike and Mike either came down that night or the next day and we came back and we got in a room and borrowed some gear. And it was a, just a period of time of, of kind of like waiting them out, and then that didn't seem to work. So we just we we basically told him, okay, we're going to get a new singer. So we started auditioning singers in in his rehearsal room, and we just brought in the shittiest yeah, guys we could find, the worst singers we could find. <laughs> We'd bring them in and have them sing, and then he'd be coming in and out. And he's just like, oh, God. Yeah. Kept saying, what are you guys doing? We go, I don't know, that guy wasn't, a, that, he wasn't yeah, that bad. He wasn't too man. bad. I kind of yeah. like that guy. Yeah, he's pretty cool. <laughs> and we were purposely doing that. And then it just got, after about three guys that were just so horrendous, yeah. he came in and he was like, okay, fuck that. I'm joining. I think the final straw was we, we auditioned a male stripper. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We, yeah. we, we, we auditioned a redheaded male stripper who was just terrible. Yeah. And that that was it. And he's like, okay, fuck it. I'll, I'll, you guys, I can't let you guys play with these fucking clowns. I'll fucking join the band. And that was it. A lot of those early kind of demos were kind of searching for whatever the fuck we were, you know, and they're pretty bad, but I mean, if you, if you kind of think about like the young kids we were and the time we came up with, you know, there, there, was, there was at least some good choruses and a couple yeah. of good riffs here and there. I mean, the lyrics were fucking horrible, but, but I mean, it was a start and uh, we ended up kind of stumbling onto a couple of tunes that were like, okay, you know, we all kind of looked at each other and like, wow, that's, that's kind of maybe where we should, we, we should be going, you know, it just kind of... It was just kind of natural. There was a song called Chemical Addiction. Yeah. Music wasn't the foremost thing at the beginning. It was just survival yeah. and, and partying and having a place to go. And, yeah. and, and then once we hit upon some stuff that was a combination of how people actually played and worked together and yeah. spending that time, then it 
it was like, oh wow, this is different than the other things we'd yeah. all done in, individually. And then, then it, you know, took on a life of its own and started. When you find your sound, it's basically when all four of you are digging whatever the fuck you're playing, and that's what it is. <laughs> Rock World lost one of its more honest voices this weekend when Allison Chain's frontman Lane Staley was found dead in his Seattle home on Friday. He was 34. Seattle police say they responded to a call from one of Staley's relatives asking them to check on his well being since he hadn't been seen in two weeks. Police then discovered a body, later identified as Staley, that had been deceased for at least a few days, surrounded by intravenous drug paraphernalia. Yeah. That was always, that was that was always, always a possibility. possibility. That was always a possibility. It was yeah. never closed until the, for me or any of us, or Lane or anybody, until the day he passed away. Yeah. So he, he also talked about yeah, doing new yeah, stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, because, well, the image is that he was just not into music anymore, but he was. No, that's not true. No, I mean, I'd fucking go over to his place and fucking he'd be playing me shit. He'd be writing all the time, you know, and, and, and I would too, and he'd play me stuff and I'd play him stuff, and yeah. vice versa. He was so much more than whatever they'd tried to sum up and it really really dawned on me and made me really sick when yeah. when we he just passed away and we'd been up for another Grammy and we went to the they convinced us to go. We weren't gonna fucking go and you know and I'm and we ended up going, I ended up going because I was like, well this probably this is never gonna fucking happen again. So we went and they at the end of those or during those shows they play a collage of all the people that had passed away that year. They didn't even put him up there. Yeah. No, no. How come? Why? why? I don't know. It's, uh, I don't I'm not know. in the grand. You know, this is this is what we're saying, and, and that's you know? what that's what kind of really. You know, I remember yeah. us like looking at each other and just getting up and leaving. Yeah. Like, how fucking stupid is that?